Tito Burnett is buried here, governor of California. First governor of California and the first governor to leave office because he wasn't wanted. In January 2023, California was hammered by a series of severe storms that claimed a number of lives and inflicted billions of dollars in property damage from flooding, down trees and mudslides. Evacuation orders remain in place for parts of the state after the newest storm hammered the region yesterday. Mudslides could bring danger long after the rain has stopped. The death toll has risen to at least 20 since late December. A visit to the Santa Clara Mission Cemetery was about to yield a new discovery for me that hadn't made the news. The grave of California's first governor and others were destroyed when a giant oak tree toppled upon them. This is how the graves looked before the tree destroyed them. And here's how they looked afterwards. I do have to say that I was a little bit shocked when I finally came up to the gravesite of the first governor of California, Peter Burnett. I thought it was an act of vandalism because you know about our culture of tearing things down, especially people like him. He had a very racist past. He was prejudiced against blacks, Chinese workers who came to California. He actually passed a tax on Chinese workers, minors, so that they really couldn't afford to be in California. It was an effort to drive them out. It's called a foreigner's tax, but they didn't charge the Europeans. I did think that this grave was destroyed by vandals that didn't like his uh, role in history. However, that's not the case. So on the satellite images, they showed the grave under a tree. And uh, as you can see, the tree uh, took out a lot of graves here. And uh, Peter Burnett's one of them. Um, unfortunate uh, that that happened. A lot of people might be cheering the fact that it happened, but here you go. You can tell that uh, the tree knocked a bunch of graves over. I thought first when I came up here that this was an act of vandalism, but I'll show you over there a little bit later why I believe that tree did it. They cut that tree down. I'm glad I wasn't here when it happened because the storms probably did it just uh, a recent uh, time ago. But uh, check it out, Peter Burnett, born November 15th, 1807. He died May 17th, 1895. He says, I believe in God, I love God, and will obey God. And somebody put a plaque there. Looks like the California State Society of Daughters of the American Colonists. Put that here in 1990, marking the grave of Peter Hardiman Burnett, first governor of California. This upper level here also has a brass plaque from the National Society of Daughters of the American Colonists. The top of it's been busted up pretty bad. And the base here is for his wife, Harriet Burnett. She was born February 23rd, 1812. She died September 19th, 1879. In the Holy Catholic Faith, age 67 years old, maybe she rests in peace. Had luck. I and mean, those pieces just exploded all around. I don't know. There must have been a statue here. That looks like a, a child's foot. After I went home, I realized that the shattered foot in my hand was that of a woman who stood atop the grave marker of C.T. Ryland, who just happened to have been married to Burnett's daughter, Letitia. Here's Julia Murphy. She died in 1871, native of Ireland. Catherine Day, wife of Samuel Day. She died 1861, she's 28. And then there's Mary Walsh. She departed this life, 1878. And as you can see here, this railing here, uh, oh gosh, getting hung up here on stuff. But that metal railing there was also damaged and knocked, man, that tree was huge. It must have knocked everything over. This one, John Walsh, native of Ireland as well. His marker's been flattened. That's very sad. Sad to see, I hope they can look at this one. It's been displaced off the pedestal. 
of John Wallace Ryland and Charles Ryland. Wow, crazy. Well, I bet there's a lot of people cheering that Governor Burnett's marker has been destroyed. So there's the culprit. That massive tree, it looks like it was hundreds of years old. We had a lot of rain and a lot of wind uh, recently in California, and I'm sure it just loosened that tree up just enough and blew it over. Just looking at the rings on it, it's gotta be probably, probably as old as the time that Governor Burnett has been dead. Uprooted the whole tree. Born in Nashville, Tennessee, Peter Burnett received no formal education, but educated himself in the law and government. In 1832, he moved to Liberty, Missouri, where he practiced law and served as a prosecuting attorney from 1840 to 1842. He moved to Oregon in 1843 and helped to organize his territorial government. He also served as a justice on the Oregon Supreme Court in 1845 and served in the Oregon Territorial Legislature from 1844 to 1848. One of his Oregon proposals was to force free black slaves to leave the state and to institute any floggings of any who remained. Referred to as Burnett's Lash Law, it was deemed unduly harsh and it was never enforced, with voters rescinding it in 1845. The gold rush attracted Burnett to California, where he continued his law career and served as a judge for the Superior Tribunal of California. After California was wrestled away from Mexico, Burnett was elected its first governor on November 13, 1849. During his term, California entered statehood in September 1850, and San Jose became its first state capital. Burnett was also an open advocate of exterminating California Indian tribes, a policy that continued with state government administrations for several decades, which offered 10 to $25 for evidence of dead natives. From Burnett's second annual message to the state legislature on January 7, 1851, Burnett said, quote, that a war of extermination will continue to be waged between the two races until the Indian race becomes extinct must be expected. Burnett also endorsed the idea of excluding African Americans from California, despite the state legislature approving of giving freedom to blacks. After he espoused such views, he received criticism for his anti-freedom views and resigned from office on January 9, 1851. He returned to his law practice, served on the bench of the California Supreme Court, 1857 and 58, and became president of the Pacific Bank of San Francisco in 1863. Peter Burnett lived in the San Jose home at 441 North 1st Street. The building was later occupied by businesses, but was raised in 1955. Burnett was also the author of an 1880 book titled Recollections and Opinions of an Old Pioneer. Because of his position in history, Burnett's name had been attached to streets and schools in California. For example, San Francisco's Burnett Avenue near the Haight-Ashbury district is named after him. But in recent years, his name has been stripped from a number of schools, including in 2019, when this middle school in San Jose was renamed in honor of the original inhabitants of that area. Former Governor Burnett died at the age of 87 in San Francisco. There is something that I remember that James Dobson said once. Uh, he was a focus on the family guy. He said that uh, life has a way of trashing your treasures. And uh, he made that remark because he went to his former alma mater and saw some of his I believe it was his tennis trophies that had been thrown in the dumpster out of the glass case that once were prized possessions of the university. And um, he said, life has a way of trashing your treasures. When I look at this grave marker, I even think about how our accomplishments are kind of trashed. And not that this grave marker represents his life, but it's just kind of symbolic of you know what he did. It's certainly not uh, a positive mark in California history. I think it's interesting that the Catholic cemeteries have a lot of above ground crypts. Maybe it's just personal preference. Let's go over here and look at this building. That's kind of cool. We'll look at this massive crypt here. I mean, imagine what that cost back in the day, even today, what that would cost. That's the Dillon, Dillon grave. The Dawson grave. A lot of Irish immigrants in here. 
or apparently we're Catholic. Zykovich is over here. So there's a lot of Murphys here. This little chapel here, kind of interesting. I've always liked these trees, the pepper trees. In fact, I used to have one. They, they go crazy, but they're, they have these tiny, fine leaves. One of the oldest trees in California, it flourishes very well. They're throughout this cemetery. Here we have a Benjamin Walters, California Private Company L, 162nd Infantry, World War I. Lived all the way to 1971.